If you're a flame main, then Annabella is probably the answer that you've been looking for. And even if you're not, she's a fantastic gateway to flame compositions. Actually a fantastic main DPS overall. Honestly, if I was starting the game today, I would roll for her. Hi, I'm Lace, and today I'm about to show you how to actually play Annabella. To start things off, let's quickly talk about Annabella's role. On paper, she's classified as a DPS type unit with an incredible amount of shatter and charge as you can see. She's predominantly main DPS material with two playstyles, burn and direct damage. And these two playstyles are activated when you trigger her skill, Ember Mag. By clicking on the skill, an icon will appear above Annabella's head and alternate between a red and a blue version. The icon of the weapon skill will also be alternating, but with an explosion and a field icon. By activating the weapon skill again when the icon you want is present, so it's going to alternate every second, you will lock in that magazine. So it looks like it's made its choice for me because I took too long, so I'm going to get the red magazine. I'm going to go ahead and use the weapon skill, and as you can see, it's gone on cooldown, and I have a whole bunch of different buffs. There's four over here, there's eight over here. And so therefore, as long as I have these magazines, these these usage counters, I am going to be in this red magazine mode. However, before we move on to talk about these two different playstyles, the red and the blue magazines, I do need to explain a couple of different mechanics, the first of which is the cross snipe. So if you hold the left click, the charge attack, you can see I am in American sniper mode. I can release it and go boom, and I will do 73k damage on the bad boy. What we can actually also do is holding down the left click, so we're in charge mode, we can actually tap the tilde key, which is next to the one key to release the shots. So as you can see, boom, boom, boom without fully charging. However, there really are two options, either shit damage or not so shit damage. And so if I was to demonstrate on the cactus, boom, 104K, and I'm just gonna tap it 42K, 10K, 10k and so i'm going to wait for it to fully charge and it's hopefully going to be a 100k crit again and so cross snipe actually has two more passives on top of its normal base effect in which the first is that it recovers 300 weapon charge when cross snipe hits a burning target or lands a critical hit it does have a 15 second cooldown but it's op if it didn't and i'll show you why a little bit later and the other is that your movement speed is increased by 30 percent for three seconds after using cross snipe i know it sounds really weird considering like using a sniper mode but it's going to be really really important for the next skill which is what we're going to discuss now the dodge attack, also known as Twilight Arc. And so by dodge attacking, you can see there are two hits, right? First of all, there is a grenade that is thrown out, and second of all, there is actually a sniper shot. The sniper shot actually acts as a fully charged scope shot. So if I hit it a couple more times, you can see 100k damage, which actually reflects what we were doing before when we were doing like the fully scoped view. Bada bing, bada boom, bada boom, and then hopefully 100k, okay, 73k. But hopefully this one right here is going to crit, and we are at 97k, so I probably didn't hold it down long enough for the one before. So again, the dodge attack has two components. We've got the bomb, which is the 12k, and we've got the big attack, the snipe attack, which was the 97k. And so the previous segment about the cross snipe skill was really important because those passives that we saw before over here, this recover 300 weapon charge when cross snipe hits a burning target or lands a critical hit, actually works on the dodge attack. And I can show you proof of that right now. So every time I do a dodge attack, it does about like one side of the hexagon. However, if it does a crit or if it does a burning one, it's going to do two of them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to crit, and as you can see, that is a massive gain. That is 300 charge. However, now we're on cooldown. I'll show you how much it actually gives, and you can see that it's not nearly as much as the one from before. However, what is interesting is that the speed buff that we talked about before, the movement speed buff, the plus 30%, is actually not applied when we're in no mode. However, the interesting thing is that once we get into one of the magazines, you can see I've got the speed buff going on. See down there, this icon right here? I'm going to go bada bing, and then I'm going to run around. I'm going to click this one, increase speed by 30%. And then now that I'm not in any of the modes, I'm going to do it again. And as you can see, the speed buff is for some reason not coming up. I suspect that this is a bug because I'm on the test server. But with all of that said, let's move back to the magazines, the red and the blue. The red magazine or the explosion icon represents Ruthless Bomb. And for you see and enjoyers, that was formerly known as Firebomb. And so when we're in the fire mode, the firebomb mode, our scoped shots actually do AoE damage. So I could demonstrate it by doing like that. And so you could see that there was like a fire cloud, but it actually happens when I use that one as as well. However, what is more important is that you see those burn ticks over there, right? Tick, tick. And the reason that this is happening is because when the target does not have a burn debuff, it's going to apply a burn debuff. However, if it does have a burn debuff, so it has one going on right now, and I do it again, you can see I get this buff over here, burn enhancements, which increases your burn damage by 30% for 20 seconds. Honestly, really freaking cracked. Now, this is really massive because it means that even at A0, Flame Enjoys finally have a reliable source of burn. But to round things out, the last effect of the red bullet is that it actually throws three more grenades. So as you can see, there are three grenades in the air, boom, right there. And really, that's just 
more damage. And so the strength of this firebomb mode, the, the ruthless bomb, the burn mode, let's just call it the burn mode, is that you can combine these burn stacks with your ruby over here. And so for those of you who are not familiar with the why, it's because when ruby's weapon spark hits an enemy that is already burnt by the wanderer, they will burn or ignite the target once and deal additional damage. So that's on the skill. So that's the E skill, the bouncing orb thing. The other thing is that on the discharge, it also does the same thing. So as you can see over here, it burns or ignites the target. So what this means is that it's actually going to proc the burns and make it explode. And so what exactly that means from a playstyle point of view is that every time you're in this burn mode, you should stack up burns, boom, 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 and it's just freaking forever. We'll talk about like how you can exactly do that. And then I'm going to use Ruby right after. So Ruby should always be following your burn application from Annabella. The other thing to consider is how exactly does Lin come into all of this? And so what she does offer is that she extends burns for an extra four seconds. Typically that means four extra ticks. And on top of that, targets with shields take an extra 15% flame damage. So you can see why Lin is actually preferred for using it in this team comp. But what it does mean is that the playstyle is actually actually using Lin's E skill first, so I'm going to dump that down, but this field over here is going to give me extra burn duration. Then I swap into Annabella and proceed to use the burn one, which is this red mark over here. Boom, boom, boom. And so every single stack of that burn that I'm applying is actually going to be extended for four seconds. And once I'm done, I go over to Ruby and burn it all up with the Ignite. After my initial testing with uh, this red magazine, I would say that this comp is probably only worth using if you actually do have Ruby to do the ignition. Otherwise, I would strongly recommend the other magazine, which let's talk about right now. So the blue magazine, this one over here, as well as this field icon represents a deceitful bomb. If you are a CN enjoyer, this is known as smoke bomb. And so what happens is that we're again doing the dodge attack spam, but this time what's gonna happen is that we're going to, with our scoped shot, it's going to lay down a field. So I'll show you that one right now. It's gonna lay down a field, a smoke field right there, and it gets detonated when a grenade actually hits it. So I'm gonna go ahead and dash, and you can see that for a brief second, my scope shot is going to hit first and then the grenade hits after. So hopefully if I shoot far enough, you'll see the smoke field come up and then it's going to get exploded. And so this is the direct damage because what you're going to see is that afterwards, there is no burn damage at all. However, what you will notice is that the damage is pretty insane. 147k from the scope shot and 148k from the ignition from the gas field. And so in this case, where previously we we're applying like the burn stacks from the red magazine and then exploding it with Ruby over here, all we have to do is spam dodge attack and as you can see we're doing enormous amounts of damage however you do need to be careful because if you are too close to the monster or the enemy themselves your grenade might actually hit them first leaving the gas field unexploded and that's what we call a dps loss and so whilst you're in the gas mode if you do do a scope shot and decide to leave the field there the field does have a slowing effect however you know, it's another DPS loss if you're just gonna leave it there without igniting it, am I right, boys? The last thing to note about the gas magazine is that it also actually reduces the target's flame resistance by 10% for 10 seconds, which is honestly pretty cracked out. And so honestly, the real advantage of this magazine is the fact that she is actually self-sufficient, right? She can be a main DPS without relying on like either Ruby or Lin. And if anything, Lin doesn't actually offer too much with the field considering we can't take advantage of the burning. And so realistically speaking, this Ruby over here could be something else. It could be a shield breaker like Saki, or if you wanna do like the A1 Saki with the reset skills, or it could be a King because you don't have the Ruby, which is completely okay as well. In terms of replacing the Lin, I would say that Lin still has a lot of utility considering her flowers actually do fantastic off-field damage. To finally finish off the Ember Mag skill, we do have a couple of passives down here, which is actually quite a fair bit. The first of which is that you get optical enhancement when you finally confirm a module. This makes it so that the charge time of cross snipe is lowered by 30% and you're immune to damage whilst charging. Now, this is a little bit different from the other servers in which you're immune to crowd control. To me, honestly, this effect is like, it doesn't even matter considering you're gonna be doing the dodge attack like pretty much 99 if not 100% of the time. However, the real juicer is the next part that comes. Recover one dodge attempt, up to four dodge attempts every two dodges. So what that means is that if I dodge and then dodge again, I get another dodge. So let me just show you that real quick. So I'm gonna select a mode and as you can see, this four buff over here recover up to four dodge attempts. So one, two, and you can see the dodge attempts are coming back. One, two, and it's coming back one, and I have to wait for the other one. But it's in your best interest to go into Annabella when you do have three full charges so that you can take advantage of that passive right there. So I'm out of charges. I'm not getting any more dodge charges there. What we also have for Deceitful Bomb Module, the gas bomb, is that when we do the cross snipe, it has a chance of reducing the cooldown of other flame weapons by 0.7 seconds. Now, 
I don't actually know what that chance is and it's not published here so that's kind of freaking weird but considering it's just a passive with like a positive effect let's just take it and move on and so the last passive is a little bit of a mess here but TLDR is that you get a buff that provides 3.5% crit rate for 15 seconds and it stacks up three times now if your crit rate exceeds 100%, then 50% of the excess crit rate is converted to crit damage. So for example, if you're at 100% crit rate and with this buff, you get up to like 110% crit rate, then that extra 10% crit rate will be converted to 5% crit damage up to a maximum of 5.25% crit damage. However, for the purposes of the global server, it's very unlikely that we're ever gonna be exceeding the crit rate cap because our nerfed equipments, I don't think they're gonna be able to give us enough crit rate to actually hit 100%. Even like some of the hardcore whales I know are still like, you know, at the 80%, 90% kind of place. However, it is still really nice to have considering we actually don't have many sources, if any, of gaining extra crit damage. And so the last few things I want to talk about is her discharge, which is just this one over here. And the TLDR is that it just does tons of damage, 254k with the stats of this character. And if you look at the ratio of this discharge, it's 765% attack. Now, if I hop over to Ruby's one over here, you can see that it's 750%. So it's actually really, really close. And so in a team comp like this one over here, you would use Lin's discharge to group if you need to group mobs, Ruby's discharge to ignite because of the burn stacks. If you're not, then it's just for pure damage and Annabelle's for pure damage. However, I think the more useful use case is like, for example, if you're in here in Annabelle and you are fully charged, so you had to pick between Ruby or Lin, then you can pick between either damage or the grouping of mobs. And then of course, a similar choice when you're in the Ruby weapon as well. In terms of her auto chain, it's actually not too bad, both the aerial and the grounded one. As you can see, the third hit actually does 60k, 84k crit, something like that. And the aerial does something similar. However, especially because of the low cooldown of this magazine system and this dodge system where you're constantly like spamming dodges and regaining dodges and all of that, I would say that the majority of your time is probably just going to be doing this. And so in terms of matrices, the on-field main DPS ones are the best on her. So I'm talking about the shit the Crows and the Samirs. However, because of the nature of this weapon itself, unless you're fighting a group of mobs, Samir's matrices may be harder to maintain stacks. And so a quick refresher on Samir's ones, you have to progressively stack them and they only last for 1.5 seconds. Because of the slow nature of the sniper, you may not be able to maintain 1.5 seconds. And so it's for this reason that I would probably recommend the Shiro and the Crow variant. And it's really good with the Crow because Crow is actually going to give you extra crit damage. And with the synergies from the crit rate buff from your girl, Annabelle, honestly, that's not to say that the Samir matrices are actually bad. If Samir and Crow is all you have, or Samir and Shira is all you have, I would still run them over pretty much every other matrix that is permanent. And speaking of permanent, or rather non-permanent, limited matrices, we do have the Annabella ones over here. And honestly, it's cracked out because it's just final damage and final crit rate buffs, and then even more on the four-piece set. In regards to her awakening skill over here, for every one enemy hit by gas explosion, so you can only use this with the blue mode, increase Clover Cross's damage by 15% for 20 seconds, stacking up to two times. That's 30% damage if you are using a gas explosion. And so I would say that especially in the absence of like your other ones such as uh, Samir Awakening, and if you are planning to play the blue mode, then I would actually recommend this one here. But the Samir one of course is still very very good considering it's like an unconditional or kind of conditional plus 20% damage. And so last of all, let's talk about her advancements. As you can see, she does have the flame resonance, which pretty much every character kind of has these days. I kind of wish that the older characters also got them. But starting with the first star advancement, we've got the hitting a target two times with cross snipe creates an optical space. So the optical space was the one that you saw before. I'm going to go boom and I'm going to go boom again. And so as you can see, we've got this fire field. Now, the interesting thing about this fire field is that you can actually launch your Ruby E or weapon skill into it and it will bounce off of the field. So as you can see, it's not coming out of that field. It's kind of acting as a container. And that's really good because a lot of the time, this cube just freaking flies off into the distance. Like that's, yeah, it's a DPS loss. The other thing about optical space is that if there's an enemy in it and it triggers the burn tally, so it's kind of like a, a, a burn tick, then the tally will be triggered an additional two times. What this means is that it's essentially going to burn faster, which means more damage per second if you are able to keep the burn up. 
It's also got a move speed slow kind of thing, but targets of cross snipe will be terrified. Speed is slow by 80% for 1.5 seconds. This one is like kind of not really useful, but maybe if you're dying, I don't know. The three star advancement is pretty interesting because you can actually recover HP equal to 50% of the damage dealt every time cross snipe lands a critical hit. And so I think it's a little bit bugged on this version because I've been at this HP for like the last four hours. And so using cross snipe doesn't seem to be gaining me any HP or even using this mode itself. Boom over there. Boom again. No HP gains. That was 100k crit damage. And it's just not working. I hope that it's fixed by launch. The other effect of the 3 star enhancement is that remember that crit rate buff from before. It's going from 3.5% per stack to 6% per stack. And so therefore it goes up to 18%. And whilst the conversion ratio remains at 50%, the cap is actually increased to 9% crit damage, which is honestly pretty good. The A5 is probably when it gets really, really freaking strong because the burn damage dealt to targets in the burn enhancement state, which is that burn buff. Remember, whilst in the red magazine, when you hit somebody who's already burning, you get the burn enhancement. Previously, it was plus 20% burn damage. With the A5, it's plus 30%. And as for the gas bomb, what you have is it actually ignores 30% of targets flame resistance up from 10%. So for you whales, I would say that this is actually really worth getting. The next one, a little bit less so, but it's definitely something that you could consider picking up if you do like to burn money, considering it's simply a flat increase to your cross snipe. So it's at 100k crit that I'm hitting, that, that, uh, that 60k one over there, or that 70k one over there, that's plus 12% final damage to that guy right there. And so with all of that said and done, would I recommend rolling for this cute maid over here? If you're insistent on playing Flame Element, I would say that she is an incredible pickup. I would rate her better than King, better than Huma, better than even Ruby. And even if you're not a Flame main, I would highly recommend her because of the blue magazine. The fact that she can deal so much damage just like isolated to her. And so if you don't really have like a flame carry or something, I would highly recommend even going for an A0 Annabella. And so in terms of enhancements, you want A1 if you do want a little bit more damage, seems okay. You want A3 if you want to recover, which I think is super, super useful considering this comp over here does not have any healing. A5 if you're an oil lord or you just want a lot more damage and A6 for a little bit more damage. I would say that the breaking point, like I'm not really like fussed about A1, it's kind of okay. The A3 is really nice because of the lifesteal, but it's really like the A5 and the A6, which is more damage. But to be honest, to be really, really honest, I would just go for A0 and wait for her dupes later because there is nothing in here, which is kind of like your uh, Saki A1, reset the skills of like all of your weapons. You don't need any of these. Like some might argue you need some of this, but it's just recovering HP. I mean, don't you guys eat food? <laughs> Not me. But yeah, that's going to be my recommendation. Let me know if you guys are going to be rolling on the Annabella. I definitely am going to be, uh, simply because that's what I freaking do. But yeah, let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise, please like, subscribe, notification bell. You already know what it is. And so as your girl Annabella once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.